you want to play with them, uh, you're very welcome. I have some grain crushing going on, <laughs> not necessarily a permeability problem. Um, well, it could be a permeability problem, but let's not get into that. All right, so we're going to work on what's called Carmen Cosini model. And I reinstalled my software for the third time this week, and now it's fine. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm not gonna. It's gonna be fine for another week, and then we're gonna go through this. Cosini model. Oh, hi. I didn't want to do that. For the average interstitial velocity. So the main problem is porous media have complex geometry. Even the simplest one, we're just assembling a bunch of spheres together. The sphere pack is still just a model. I don't have the world of perfect sphere in my references. But even sphere packs are complex enough already. And no matter what we do, we never know it all. And we never know it completely. Basically, the moment you take a sample out of the reservoir and you analyze everything about it, you now know everything about a piece of rock that is no longer in the reservoir. <laughs> Ones, the stuff that you left behind is not precisely the same as the sample you have. So we need some sort of like average approach to get still the essence of uh, of the flow through porous media. So we need an average approach. And in the small spaces of the porous medium, wherever I go, actually, I know, I know equation of motion. If it's a Newtonian fluid of constant density, then it's Navier. So, but even if it's not, I know equation of motion. The problem is that I can't solve that equation in the world of motion. So the first approach was what I showed last time. Darcy simply had the experiment. And they were in sand cones, and he literally applied the pressure gradient, not a gravity, that in a sand cone, and he measured based on the pressure gradient, which we call the manometer in HPC physics. He measured the pressure difference as well as he knew the fluid in the water, and he simply measured what comes out, and he noticed the linear equation. So he basically what we call Darcy's law. He didn't necessarily derive it. What we're going to do here is one of the simplified derivations of it, which is not mathematically rigorous, which we can't teach you yet, but basically arrives at a similar result. And we're going to essentially compare it to Darcy's law and then figure out what the permeability of a medium might be. So, but there is actually, uh, there is a, most rigorous approach. I'm going to just write the notes if you ever want to do it. Uh, so for rigorous upscaling from Navier-Stokes equation to Darcy's law. So he didn't know about it, but somebody else actually made that link 
in sphere packings, in periodic sphere packings. See Whitaker. 1984 in Transporting Porous Media. That's a journal. If you don't know about the journal, you will find out. Some papers that you're going to be reading <laughs> will be in there. Whitaker. W H I T A C K. You can't read my beautiful handwriting. <laughs> so the approach I'm going to describe is a combination of Carmen and Kozeni. So two of them actually worked at it uh, at the different times. Uh, so we're going to do Carmen. He worked on it in the, about 37, and Kozeni in 27. They have like a simplified approach. Had a simpli simplified approach. So what was it about? If I have a porous medium, let me draw this pattern. Just like that cube that is really round. And it's complicated inside. I don't want to know all of the details. I want to know some average details. So I'm going to assume some sort of an average tube going through. Maybe even multiples in parallel, doesn't matter. Some sort of like an average thing. And that average thing, I know it's not straight, it's actually curvy. Now that's a model I'm making, and actually next time we're going to do a different model where it's going to be straight. So there are certain simplifications that you simply make and go with. So you assume torturous tube. across the medium. Now, I need to relate that tube somehow, even, uh, it has some length, right? And that length is length of this entire torturous thing, right? I don't know it, but I'm going to get to that. All I write now take is that it's torturous. What I can measure from the outside, I can look at this area, so I know the area. And that's area of the entire side. I can go to the lab and measure porosity. Right? Helium porosity, simple measurement. Or I can take a thin cross-section and look at what I see in the cross-section. Either way, I'm going to take it that I know the porosity. So basically, the, the area that is actually open to flow on this side is porosity times A, assuming that this side has the average porosity of the entire medium. So this is area open to flow. And my actual length of the sample, that's something I, do, I can measure. So that is L. So that's length of this cubic thing. Now this imaginary tube across the sample, 
has radius of, I'm going to call it imaginary, because it is, two, so then if I actually then want to quantify flow through this two, then this average, I'm going to call it average velocity in this imaginary two, is equal to flux, volum volumetric flux, divided by this uh, area of the tube. And we know actually that from the hagen poiseuille derivations. And it's length, but in this case, length of the tube. So this is our result from Hagen Fazel. I can look at the average of two. Now I don't know LT and I don't know what this R should be, so I have to go about figuring out what to substitute inside from some measurements that I have about this rock. So that's the, the we need now need to somehow make the link and that make link should make sense. Okay? And then no matter what. At the end of this game, we actually then have to go compare to the actual experiments and possibly adjust the parameters too to actually have them along that way. So this is essentially a standard process when you're averaging something that you don't know. Uh, and sort of in an engineering way without a lot of uh, math derivations because even math derivations would require knowing the geometry. Okay? So you have to move you know, on move on uh, beyond that. So how do we now connect the two? Let's actually now open a new page. So I'm going to take a look at what do I have on the outside, and I'm going to define things that I can measure, and that is I can measure my basically Darcy velocity, some sort of if I'm measuring volumetric flux through the sample and I divide it by the area, I get what we call Darcy velocity. That's something I can measure. And now I know the uh, porosity. So basically what I'm going to call an interstitial velocity is my Darcy velocity, Q, that I just simply measure, divided by porosity. So what's that telling me is essentially I see some sort of average flow flowing out of this Q. However, so I see it as it's like flowing, as if I can kind of imagine a front move fluid like getting out of my sample. However, I know that fluid inside has to go through a torture path. So it has to go faster. Okay? So when I divide velocity by 0.3, I'm going to get a larger number, and that's my interstitial velocity inside of this torture tube. So that's kind of like the visual idea of interstitial velocity. So Q is measured, divided by A, and based on Darcy's uh, assumption, this is minus K over mu delta P over L divided by T. Area. And what's your slope? Uh, this is Q over A. So Q is volumetric flux over A. So Q 
over A is minus K over mu delta. So this is volumetric over sample area. Now, if I'm thinking about the travel time that the fluid is taking to go through the sample, zoomed in. Okay. So my travel time through this sample This is basically inside this tortuous channel, this imaginary channel. It's the length of the channel over average velocity. But what I observe on the outside of the sample is length of the sample over Darcy's velocity. Or this interstitial velocity, rather. So this is, again, my imaginary channel. And this is my Darcy scale of observation. So what do I get when I make the two equal? So if I actually put my formula for average V, which was in terms of LT, if you remember, and I do LT over it, Double check me, but it's <coughs> divided by R squared delta P. So this is 1 over average velocity, and this is my LT. And that has to be equal to minus L. And then I have phi mu L divided by, I'm looking at this formula up in the corner, so what I actually want out of it is k, that's the parameter that kind of averages geometry that I don't know. And I'm attempting to relate it to the things that I can measure. So let's see how far I get with that. From here, delta P will go away. So my K is phi R square over 8, L square over LT square. This part here, I'm going to call, so this is basically square of the uh, 1 over tau, where tau is to tortuosity. And I define tortuosity as LT divided by L squared. So if I went across and it took me 1.5 times more longer, in terms of length across the sample, then my tortuosity is 1.5 divided by 1 squared. Now, this is conceptually, I don't know this channel. Okay? So what this ends up being is a fitting parameter to strength. So conceptually, it's tortuosity, but I can't measure it 
I'm going to say scan the sample. And trust me, I actually have scanned the samples. And then when you fit it in, it doesn't work. <laughs> so it, has to, it still has to fit this thing. Because it's actually a catch-all for all of the averages and all of the things that we were shoving in here. Okay? So this ends up being, it's concept, conceptually this ratio of lengths, but really in practice it's simply a fitting parameter. So it's conceptually related to ratio of lengths. But in practice, it is a fitting parameter. Now, I have one more thing I don't know, and this is this R. And I want to relate that to the complexity of my, my pore system. So this one I can leave as a, I can calculate it in certain cases, or know that based on the experiments, what, what are the numbers that work well. But I want this to be also relatable a little better to my actual porous medium. So what do we do? First, there is an observation. When I have a spherical tube, which is something that I know everything about, the radius, when I look at the tube in itself, it has a certain cross section and certain perimeter that defines its shape. And when I divide the tube, I will get R square P divided by 2RP. I will get R over. So the shape of my object is related to the radius of the object. That's actual basic idea of hydraulic system. So maybe I have a more complex shape. But if I look at the cross-sectional area divided by the perimeter, I might get something that is my average radius, even though my Now, I need to move that one more notch up because it has to be related to something that I can measure a little easier. So I'm actually going to kind of sum up all of those contributions, all of the cross sections, and actually look at the volume versus surface area of the radius. And that's going to be related to this radius or average radius. If I, if you, if I look at the sphere path, Number, there is a volume of the pore spaces in there. And then there are all of these surfaces of the tube. And they're the ones that are actually putting the resistance into flux. If you notice, the force of my velocity, the boundary condition, the force of my velocity are not zero. So quantification of these areas is very important. how we're going to proceed in finding uh, this area. And the concept is actually origina originates from uh, hydrology, and it's called hydraulic radius. So basically here, I'm wondering, before I move on to the next page, i got to figure out how do I relate it to porous medium. Okay. Got to bring my imaginary tube to some sort of a reality. Okay. 
so again, so my observation from cylindrical tubes, so the, 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 the area of hydraulic, or the idea, the idea of hydraulic radius, times hydrology where you might have some sort of a ditch, and that ditch might have a very complex surface, and have water in it. And then there's this basically vetted perimeter. So this portion of the perimeter is what I would call a vetted perimeter. And this hydraulic radius is basically the ratio of the area to the vetted perimeter. So my R H is area over perimeter. Now, if I had actually just the cylindrical tube that I was going through, so in cylinder, it's going to be R square of P divided by 2 R P, which is R over 2. If I had an equilateral triangle, it would be something else, and it would be re be related to the side of that. And it's basically the, the this vetted perimeter and this hydraulic radius in hydrology is basically measuring the effectiveness of discharge through uh, channel because the more complex the surface. Um, there is more resistance to the flow. Okay, so now we're gonna try to somehow look at the sphere. So basically, I'm gonna try to estimate on one end in my sphere fact what this RH would be. And on the other end, I am going to relate that to my imaginary cylindrical tube. So I'm gonna look at R as two times that so I have this again, I have a picture of the medium trying to estimate something from it, and I have this imaginary tube that I'm trying to put in this chip. So let's get back to this. So now we're going to try to get this. Let's try to find this in a sphere packing. So this area of our perimeter, and again, I had this idea, okay, I have one side, and this side has an area in there, and there is perimeter, right? But if I kind of sum it all up, I can go to volume divided by surface area of the grain. Right? So that's what we are going to do. So this A over P is also volume of voids in the medium, in this packing, or in this for, porous medium for that matter, over surface area of grains, because of those are my channels inside of the porous medium, right? Grain surfaces. Now if I had that I had that sphere, or not sphere, but a uh, cube. And if V is total volume or bulk volume, then volume of the voids is essentially porosity times my bulk volume. And there's this S, which is surface area of the grains. So 
So how do I actually uh, go about estimate it? So if I have an uh, assembly of spheres, I know that basically if I look at the, so my sphere area is for uh, R square, uh oh, um, I'm using R, R, S, I'm going to put R sphere, sorry, not related to R, R that we had before. So R was a channel radius. I'm trying to avoid using R and so RS. And the volume of spheres is 4 over 3 up RS cubed. And basically times number of the spheres. I'm going to put N, right? where n is number of spheres. Now, I need to kind of figure out a way to, uh, to, to relate this volume, or even about volume, uh, to the royal sphere. So volume of spheres, all of them, divided by bulk is the solid fraction. One minus solid solid fraction is one minus the rod. Sorry, solid fraction. So my solid fraction is one minus V is equal to volume of spheres, all of them. divided by V. So my V is divided by 1 minus V. And my surface area of grains So I can actually put it all in. Now why not? How did this device go? That's a great question. So my R H, which is V V over S, is equal to V over 1 minus V, and then Good news is I can get rid of a lot of them. Too. I sometimes uh, relate this to the diameter of the sphere because that's what we actually measure when we are measuring any kind of 
cross section in geology. I look at the cross sections and I find the average areas. Since I want to relate that to a realistic medium or an actual measurement, so this is actually diameter of the sphere divided by six. So my RH is actually R over 2. So I can plug that back in to my, so my R is 2 times RH. Okay. So I can put that in. Put that in. And I'm going to get my permeability okay. which is C over 8 R square 1 over tau that ends up being C cube D square divided by 72 tau 1 minus V squared. So now what I have in there is something telling me about the grains that I have in my medium. If they're all equal, that's all great. If not, I throw in an average grain diameter here, but that's a measurement that I make about my medium. I have porosity, which is another measurement that I make about my medium. I have 72 times tau, and I have a fitting parameter. Very often, for spheres uh, of, of, uh, of uh, just like a packing of equal spheres, tau is approximately 2.5 for a pack of equal spheres. But it, it is a measurement. If you ask me to do image analysis, which I do, and look at the tortuosity or, or average tortuosity of pathways across a sphere packing, it's actually 1.5. So it's not, this, uh, this is a fitting parameter. What we have in there, packed in there, is not just the tortuosity of the channel, but also inertia that happens in the flow because. It's not just the length in itself. It's actually this nonlinear thing of flow going into crevices and coming out. And here it kind of straightens it out into a point. Okay. So that's why you need to have this flexibility of comparing to an actual experiment with everything that you kind of ever just shot on the carpet or on the floor. So it's not something. But the rest are the relationships. And just one more comment. What's important about having these relationships is that this gives me a framework to fit experiments that captures something essential about granular media. It doesn't have to be completely accurate, but it's my starting point for bunker fitting, right? But if I don't have a good functional relationship, like what is the essential relationship between permeability and my grain radius? It's d squared. So as my sizes of the grains go twice smaller, my permeability goes four times smaller. Okay? That is the important insight, that type of intuition. So the exact little details of how I fit this in, oh well. But like I get the relationship with porosity, how do I change with changing porosity, and how do I change with changing grain diameter. Okay? And that's the type of physical insight that these formulas are very good for. All right, I see you on Monday. And we're going to do bundle of tubes model on Monday.